Wildcat football! <laughs> Well, the first part of it is like you've got 20 something kids that you developed a relationship with for four years. So it's like, oh, it's gonna be kind of weird not having those guys around. You know, kids like Ali and Lawler and, and Iasconi and those guys. It's, you know, kids that you be, you become pretty close with. You you know, you're texting with them, you know, how's, how's lacrosse, how's this? And, you know, not that that stuff goes away because I try to keep tabs on those guys uh, the best I can. But, you know, just you start, the wheels start turning. Like, how can we replace those guys? It's a lot of, snaps that they played um and then you get to a point where you start to get excited about your young guys and like where their progress that they make and what they can be and uh start thinking about the next group so it's uh you, you tend to move on pretty quickly and start thinking about the the next year the next group and even to a degree like you start thinking about that maybe towards the end of the season when you you know looking at like all right we can slot him in there we can slot him in there maybe if he grows or gets a little stronger he could help us there so part of my job like as the head coach is our assistants a lot of times are so focused on what's in front of us today, but I'm, a lot of times I'm worried about like the depth and where we're going a year from now. Always keeping an eye on those young guys and, and kind of those guys are just as important to me as the older guys. So kind of keeping the whole program in the frame. The longer I coach, I remember as a young guy being like in January and February being like, God, I can't wait for football. Now it's like, I'm so tired at the end of the season that it's a little later before I get to that point now. Um, so generally, like, I didn't coach lacrosse this year, which was, which was great. <laughs> I needed that break. Um, so, you know, for me, as soon as football ends, it's time to start being a dad. <laughs> Focus a little bit more on work. My actual job, what pays the bills. Um, you know, a lot more bedtimes, a lot more diaper changes. I love football season for, for the obvious reasons. Um, but it's tough, you know, being away from the kids so much and spending so much time outside of the house. You know, sometimes I feel like I don't, I see my son for five minutes in the morning and then that's it. Like I try to say hi to him in the morning before he goes to daycare or I drop him off, whatever. And then a lot of times, you know, I miss, miss bedtime. So it's kind of tough, but so try to go be, in, be a dad, get to my daughter's lacrosse game and try to be nice to the coach because I know what they're going through. <laughs> I think we have a, a good group of kids and what from what I can tell so far um, they all get along really well very tight-knit group they're very uh, I don't want to say I don't want to sound like the other groups weren't but like they're very nice to each other like they root each other on there's uh, not as not as much busting chops out there which can be good and bad you know you know one thing one of my my, my uh, JV coach Mark Gentile has been saying to me for year for you know, since last season ended, he's like, this group you have coming back is different. They, they really care about and love football and it's very important to them. And they, they get along, they're nice kids, they're good kids. So, you know, that's not to say the other groups weren't, but the, this group is certainly just a tight, very, very much a tight knit crew. Um, and all very well respect, you know, well, well behaved, respectful kids. But they, the way we're practicing right now, is much different than how we've practiced in the past couple of years. These kids really work hard at it and they don't just kind of go through practice and try to go through the motions. These kids really work hard. And 
it's I think it's showing him the amount of stuff that we've had, got in. You know, we still have a long way to go in certain positions for sure. But you know, they come to work every day, and it makes it a lot of fun to be out there. It went really good. There was a big turnout, a lot of girls, and we put on a good show for all the parents. Yeah, you could see all the little girls were having a lot of fun, and like it's definitely like getting to look up to us. It was, 
I thought it was good. We did a lot of running. And off, a little sloppy, a little bit sloppy. Yeah, we should have figured it out a couple things. It's always first day stuff, yeah. I think. Um, you know, everyone's kind of getting there. We're just learning. It's a total new offense, new way we're running the play. So, a lot of conditioning, and uh, kind of everyone going to be ready. Yeah, I think we're doing pretty good. Um, still got better hands than um, this oh my God. here. Hey, okay. do you have the clip of him dropping the wheel? Oh, yeah. <laughs> put that in. <laughs> Yo, and put this clip. <laughs> he was like this, he's like... Uh, band camp is a lot. I've heard a lot of people in band refer to it as the best and worst week of the year, and I think that's fair. <laughs> we go to Camp Nokomis on Lake Winnipesaukee, um, and then the first day is pretty packed. The first day is really chaotic. We leave really early in the morning. We take like a one and a half hour bus, and then we take a ferry into the middle of a lake on some island, Bear Island, and they're like, you just stay in cabins and bunk beds like any other regular camp. We all get on a boat, put all of our stuff in trash bags, head over to an island. We're like, you know what, let's march. We march, we do some trump we do some playing, trumpet, saxophone, whatever it is. We go home. We all go for just under a week and you kind of learn all the basics, how to march, how to play the music that we're gonna play, um, and just kind of like charting the routines we do on the field, and that's a lot of it, but we also do like fun stuff, you know, we'll have different events every night, things like that. Man camp's really fun, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's just, we go out to an island for a week and we learn all the marching, all like, like the halftime show, we learn all that stuff. And there's a lot of shenanigans that happen and it's, it's, it's just a really fun time. Man camp's super fun. It's, you go to an island for a week and learn all about, about how like the high school marching band would work and how to march and like the music. Band camp, so, we go on a week-long trip to an island and we practice a lot of band stuff like marching, playing in small groups with our section and playing in big groups. And we also have a lot of competitive games with each other that we compete between each cabin. So it's a really fun time for all of us to learn a lot about band but also to have a lot of fun. Every day you do sectionals. So since I'm a section leader, I lead all the flutes. There's like 17. And we teach them how to play the music that we're going to play for the halftime show and we do marching so we learn how to march in a parade we learn all the different moves we do charting so we do like we learn where we're going to be standing in the halftime show so as a section leader i teach my whole section how to do those kinds of things but every night we have like an activity so we have trivia night we have a dance and then we have the olympics on the last day so it's just so much fun like it doesn't even feel like you're going there for school. It's all like first day introductions and stuff, like sectionals, starting to learn the music, but not like getting down. Um, but it's basically the same pattern. We learn all the marching skills, like the basics. We learn or we try to chart. Charting is like when, how you learn where to stand during the halftime show. Um, so we learn that at band camp. And we also learn the music for the halftime show and when we're in the stands. And it's really fun. There's free time too. There's a bunch of other activities. But the basis is supposed to be there to have a fun getaway to start the year. Um, band camp 
is basically what we do over the summer to make sure we're prepared for the um, fall marching season. Um, so basically, the way the band works is that we're split into two different seasons. We have the marching season and we have the concert season. And band camp is focused entirely on the marching season. So a lot of band camp isn't even learning how to play our songs, it's just learning how to march. We have three hour marching sessions every day. We have charting sessions where we plan out the halftime show. Uh, and then we do have sectionals and even rehearsals, which is when we learn uh, some of our music because we do get new music every year. Um, but really, it's just about, first of all, making sure that the band is tight and together in terms of our marching ability and, you know, setting the groundwork so that we can play and march together. But it's also, like, big for morale building. We have evening events every night. We have uh, trivia. We have the dance. We have the skit show, which is the best evening events. Um, and it's just a good way to bring the band together to make sure everyone's friendly with each other and to kind of just, I guess, build our group up. And I think it's very important for like the culture of the band. Oh, there's a lot of funny moments there. My cabin, sub-freshman last year, I had a tradition with some M&Ms. Uh, they, they can all tell you about that. So yeah, <laughs> band camp's really fun. So every year, the seniors give the lower classmen or whoever's brand, the male seniors give like the the freshmen, the sub-freshmen, whoever is brand new in the band, they give them nicknames. And so I got to watch JT and Justin Walker interview Jimmy. And they asked him to eat a cra uh, saltine cracker in the most animalistic way possible. So he crushed it up and dropped it in his mouth. And that was really funny. <laughs> Um, I love band camp. Band camp's great. It's stressful. It's so stressful. I'm, I was not like sad to leave it, I guess. Like, band camp is a thing you get excited for to go to. You have a great time when you're there, and then you come back and it's like a massive weight off your shoulders. Oh, I'm winning that. I'm already locking in. I've been playing it for two years, Senior Assassin. All my friends know they hate me for it because they know I'm going to go crazy. For the one who would most likely win, I think it would be Connor Lovell because he's really into this ever since sophomore year. He's been talking to me and all of his friends. He's made a whole notepad about the, like, the, the tips for Senior Assassin, what to do and what not to do. It's like his personality. It's like him with the camera. It's just like a moth to a flame at that point. Probably Connor Lovell. Connor, yeah. Probably choose um, Connor. The winner, I think Justin, Justin could be a contender for the winner, definitely. I don't know, maybe Ben or JT would win. Winner would be Catherine Wong. No one would expect her to win, but she would be sneaky and she would play her cards right. And, and like someone predictable would get to the end and then Catherine Wong would assassinate them at the last second. Either Lily McLaughlin or Bella would win. I think I would win. I think Bella would win too, obviously. Probably Colin Dwyer would get a win. I think he's, he's pretty gritty, so. Mohanad Saeed because he is in the army. There's this one kid. I think his name's. I think his name's Sam. <laughs> I'm pretty sure his name's Sam. His his nickname's Crouton. He's very small and very hard to evade. So I'd have to say that he would be the one that would win somehow. I feel like Sam kind of has a shot because he's small, so he's a small target. He can run kind of fast. He's he's just gonna be zooming around. Dom would be like super overly competitive at it. So then I think that he would have a good shot of winning that. I think I'd win, to be honest. Yeah. Probably Timmy Watson. <laughs> probably, he'll probably just sit at home. Uh, Timmy Watson would win. He's a smart kid. So. I think Aaron probably would win. Oh, I think. <laughs> It'd be close between Spencer and Dean. I think they'd fight, but I feel like Spencer would, would probably win. Spencer Bagtaz would definitely win. I'd probably also have to say Spencer. He'd be pretty into it. I'd think Marv. He's opposite smaller, and he's like, he's chill. He's just chilling. I might give it a Marv because, I mean, he got something in his head when it comes to, like, he, he preps things. So, I'm pretty sure Marv would probably win. Probably say, like, Marvin, maybe, because he's just, he's small, he's quick, and he's perfect, like, he can hide pretty easily, and nobody really knows where he'll be. I think the winner would probably be, like, Marv. Like, Marv is, like, sneaky with it. He would, he would probably be the winner. I could see that. Marvin would be good at it. Fast. Okay. Shorter in stature, so it can hide pretty good. <laughs> I got Marv in the way. Everyone, so many people have said Marv because they're like, we don't know what he does outside of football. Yeah. He's just a man of mystery. Mr. <laughs> Marv. 
Because, like, Marv's, like, mysterious. It's, like, his thing. <laughs> uh, probably Marvin. He's very, uh, Marvin is very mysterious. <laughs> Marv, sneaky warrior. He's just so mysterious. Probably Marv. I'd probably say Marv is really mysterious. Marv is really mysterious. Okay, first person eliminated. Huh. Who would lose? I don't know. <laughs> um, I think Emma Chocello would lose. I think she would too. I don't know, first person eliminated? I don't know, probably like, like Lex. I don't know, <laughs> probably. Like he's like somebody that comes to mind. I feel like, like one of the freshmen would definitely get eliminated. Who's getting last place? Josue. It's too slow. He's getting out right away. Can't hide anywhere. Kaylee would be first eliminated. Well, I feel like it's gonna be Jimmy because I don't think he's gonna really be able to like strategize that well. No, off I love Jimmy, but no, no offense to him. Off of probably Nick Meninos. He would not be very good at that. Uh, first to be eliminated would be probably like Aiden Bellevue. Yeah, he, uh, probably forget about it. For football, I would I would choose um, probably Noah Matten. Just feel like he wouldn't do it right. Probably Lex. Oh, Lex, for sure. I mean Max Bagtaz. I think Max Bagtaz would get too aggressive and someone would get him. Uh, maybe Spencer, because they literally live in the same house. I think JP would be 100% the first eliminated. I think, I think Colin Dwyer would be eliminated first. I think he'd try to be aggressive. I mean, he'd get out really fast. He's a little stupid. I think it would be Julian, because he would do the exact same thing. I think Abby Joyce would be eliminated first. I'm going to go Mac Tobin out first. First, like the very first kill. Jack Sear, because he would forget. <laughs> I think that Emma would probably get eliminated first. I feel like Declan would probably get out pretty quickly, uh, or maybe Vabush too. It might be like Vabush. Vabush could easily just be minding his own business and then get out. <laughs> Vabush, um, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest. He's just <laughs> he'd be the first eliminated. Vabush would definitely get out probably uh, very very quickly. Probably of a bush. <laughs> that is not the first time I've heard that name. I would have to think about that one, so I might just go with JP. I'd say JP. JP's big target, and he wouldn't know what to do. He'd just run around. So probably JP. <laughs> I think the terrible would definitely be JP. He's pretty big, hard to hide, hard to get away. Probably JP. He's too loud. Um, Hostway would be the first one to get eliminated. First eliminated? JP. Panada would definitely be eliminated first. The first eliminated, I feel like it would be Josue. Like, Jose, he's just, I'm sorry, Josue, but you're kind of dumb. <laughs> Who'd be first eliminated? Definitely Josue. <laughs> because, come on, it's Josue. <laughs> and then, if you know him, you know why I'm saying this. He's just a goofball. <laughs>Uh, kids are really working hard. We get a good group of kids. They, they all get along. They work very hard. Yes coach, no coach. They're a very polite group. Uh, it's just good to get out here and go against some other people, so we're excited to get the season going.
great job. Nice job. I think it went well. I wasn't expecting it to go that well. Offense, we looked really good. Pretty good, a little tired, you know. Two days, past two days, it's been, it's been tiring, but everyone's just ready to hit. I mean, started a little slow, but ended off, ended off with a lot of energy, I'd say. I mean, young guys are looking good. A little scared to hit it first, but they're looking better. Still some time to go though before the first season, first game. Well, I'm feeling good. We, we did, I think we won today, I'm not, honestly not gonna lie. We did, we did really good. So, our oh, shadow line, shout out for the pass protection. Uh, Noah's looking good. Mark did really good today. So everyone's looking better than I thought. Allard's looking good. Lovell's Lovel, looking good. He had a nice comeback. Go, Gus, had a Gus, Gus had a touchdown. <laughs> Noah, Noah, good blocks. Aiden, Aiden Bellevue. Um, Allard, yeah. Mark, Mark's, you know, looking good. <laughs> Gus. Gus, Gabe. I mean, the whole lines, you know, we're young, but we're looking good. Three, one, two, three,